Part of me that is so stuck in the 80s. <laughs> I used to dance to that song at a wonderful little club, just a few blocks over there, called Tramps. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spelled T R A M M P P S. And it was a party I was always invited to. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to stir. And I loved it. Um, it was torn down a few years ago to make room for the baseball stadium. So it's one of those gone places that I think yeah. has so many of. The longer you live here, <laughs> the longer you live. Right. Um, and this place is also a party that I always feel invited to. And so are you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make sure it never goes away. OK? Give them some money tonight. Um, I want to thank Riverwalk Theater for this opportunity. Um, it's been a great, great thing for me to have a chance to work with great actors and a great director to play with this script. Um, I especially want to thank Mike, who keeps the show running over there, Mike Syracuse. Yay! And the person who has really done all the heavy lifting on this whole series of stage readings out here, Laura Croft, where are you, Laura? Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, the after, uh, there's a uh, few up upcoming events I want you to let you know about. On um, August 21st and 22nd at 3 p.m., there's Art in the Park. You can read about that over there. Um, Battle of the Bands comes up August 26th at 7 p.m. And another staged reading of a play, a new play, Ernie's Life by Aidan Supal, at, on September 2nd at 7 p.m. All right here. Um, this uh, play you're going to read here tonight is a work in progress. And by being here tonight, you are part of that progress. Um, I really want to get your feedback <coughs> uh, based on your reactions to this, this script tonight. Um, and um, we're not having a talk back because talk backs are awful. <laughs> Unless they're done really well, and they never are. Um, so um, you'll notice in your program there's a link to a survey that will be up tonight. Um, you can also give me your email over there on a sheet on the table, and I will email you with that link if you want to get it that way. But this is a short survey, anonymous. Um, you can answer the questions you want to answer and not the ones you don't. Um, greatest thanks go to Mary Job, who agreed to direct this play, this reading. She's the greatest. If you haven't got a chance to work with her, you really have to try to do that because she's, as I said on Facebook, you, you cannot be in a room with her for 20 minutes without learning something. Um, and my extraordinary cast, Tanner, or excuse me, Connor Kelly. He's <laughs> playing the main character, Tanner. Cassie Little. He's playing Sarah. Ndegwa McLeod is playing Robert and Rachel Doherty. Aaron, this is vodka. Scene one. Sprightly carnival music lights up on Tanner. Okay, uh, the entire story of my involvement 
with Alcoholics Anonymous. Got a pencil? <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm an alcoholic, and I'm not sure whether my talking about AA with you all here like this violates the anonymous part. That's it. That's the whole story. Cute. Tricky, but cute. We didn't laugh. Oh, nobody laughed. Are you surprised? They're alcoholics. <laughs> They're they weren't drinking. Do you need me to remind you what the word sober means? They're not dead. They're recovering. They're not dead just because they are recovering. Well, that's debatable. <laughs> My God, I forgot how beautiful you are. No, 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 I never forgot. Not for one second. I think about it every night, how it was between us. How in your arms, I forgot everything that was dirty and ugly with this oh, world. Oh, I know, I know. And it's so dreary that you keep talking about it, Tanner. So, please. Thank you for seeing me again. I was afraid you wouldn't come. How could I miss it? You just, for so long, you refused to even talk to me. I swear, at one point, I just stopped, never call you again. But then, sooner or later, late at night, I'd remember what it was like how so much more perfect my life was when we were together. You thought so too. It was like your first time, like a nine-year-old boy discovering human touch for the very first time. We touch our hands, our legs, our, <laughs> your fingers and my hair, our bodies entwined, locked, my, and your, <clears throat> You have to remember that. You must remember this. We hate the things we miss. Hate? Never. It's the first time I knew what love was. Oh, if I had a nickel for every time I've heard that. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Tanner. Hi, Hi Tanner. Tanner. <clears throat> right. Um, I mean, my name is Tanner, and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Hi Tanner. Tanner. I think. Oh, oh. Cool. Whoops. I mean, <clears throat> my name is Tanner. Oh, okay, I'm Tim. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> 17 months sober. Thank you. Uh, it's a fun Robert with a golf club. No, three. Excuse me? It's been three months. Your esophagus blew up on March 17th. You've been sober for three months, not 17. Killjoy. It's a thankless job, but somebody's got to do it. It was 17 months ago. I should know. I nearly died. No. Wait. 19. Lights up briefly on Aaron, off to one side, on a phone. I'm 19. You're mixing the numbers up. It's been three months since you last had a drink on March 17th. Today is... June 17th, 2019. I haven't had a drink in three months. Three months. No alcohol. That's serious. And so you, like, do those meetings and everything? Yes. Every week. Or more. They have this thing. 90 and 90. You commit to going to 90 meetings in 90 days. That's serious. 2019, 18, 17, Who 15. Who is that? Nothing. Nobody. Thank you very much. Three months. That's not nothing. That's something. Hell yes, it is. And no one minds that you're not actually an alcoholic. I, I am, though. I mean, it's been 17 months. No alcohol. Three. I mean, three. Three months, 17 months. Who cares? That doesn't prove you're an alcoholic. You could never drink vodka again and still not be an alcoholic. Never? Theoretically. But see, I could, no, not never. I could never do that. To never feel that relief, that cold wash like a waterfall with the sweet undercurrent of heat, warmth as it goes down. I could never do never. You can. 
three months? Why not 17 months? Why not 19? Years. Oh, what? I'm 19 years old, not 19 months. Okay. 19 years. I could never do that. Hell, I could be dead in 19 years. Alcoholic or not. She makes a good point. Robert lines up an imaginary ball on an imaginary green, prepares to putt. <clears throat> Eye on the ball. Can you remember what it was like to be nine years old? Yes. Really? I mean, you really remember what happened or just what you want to think happened? I mean, you work with kids and families every day. Doesn't your own shit get all mixed up with their whatever? Dysfunction? Toxicity? Really? Oh, that's harsh. It was a big thing in the 90s. Toxic parents, boom time for therapists who did the traditional talking cure. Blah, Lucky me, I got blah, to look around for the cognitive boom. Blah, 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 blah. Really? Blah, blah, blah. That's interesting. Am, blah, blah, am I blah. boring you? Yes, you're talking about you. This is my time. Excuse me? All therapists are narcissists. That's what you told me. Then why aren't you a therapist? Huh. Good one. I'm a photographer. I capture reality as it really is. The unseen moment frozen in time like... Phone rings. This is Robert. You gotta tell them to pay attention. You gotta tell him to slow down. I swear, if I make it through one more day of this... Oh, I gotta take this. I'm sorry. Who the hell is that? Nobody. Christ, Robert, that foursome's almost on top of us. Can't it wait until I'm we're... nobody in this family. I don't matter. The only time anyone even notices me is when I do something that they can brag about or be ashamed of. Oh, where are you right now? I'll, I just need to know you're safe in the next two hours. Two hours? Robert, we don't have time for this. He's driving like a fucking maniac. I think he's been drinking. I have not, not a sip for the last 17 months. I mean, three months. Nobody believes you anymore. And get off my fucking couch. <laughs> God, I want another martini. Where the hell is the waiter when you actually want something, right? Is this what you really want? Really? Because I don't see what the hell good can come from just yammering on about your childhood and your temptations and why we pretend we want to quit. And the truth is, Every damn one of us wants to go right on dancing to that same old drummer, Smirnoff, Stoli, Absolute, <laughs> freaking pop off when we're in a pinch. Erin has transformed into a weight person. She delivers the new martini to Sarah. Well, thank you. No problem. Mom, what did she call me? It could have happened that way. We could have had a kid. We stopped using condoms. <laughs> Are you kidding with this? Yes. We stopped using condoms. You don't think I was still taking care of it on my end? I was on the pill when we were using condoms. My therapist says you're toxic. What? Well, I never said that, <laughs> and I'm not your therapist. You might as well be, and you did say that she abused- I said she abused you emotionally. That's hardly tantamount to being a toxic parent. Ah, tantamount. Wait a minute, parent? Where is all this parent shit coming from? You gave me chlamydia. I did. Oh, sorry. And I know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> and it's got nothing to do with why I drink. I mean, drink. I mean, I'm not making excuses. And please don't give me one of those quaint little phrases you love. Let go and let God. You're only as sick as your secrets. If you always do what you've always done, then you'll always get what you've always got. I get it. I'm not some nine-year-old kid, all right? They're not buying it. They're just not laughing. They're just staring at me. They're not judging you. Oh, the hell they're not. They've all been where you are right now. <laughs> Stay with it. Don't judge. My name is Tanner, and I'm... Uh, hi, Tanner. Hi, Tanner. Thank you. <clears throat> and I'm... Hi, Tanner. Hi, Tanner. Listen, he's not my therapist, and he's certainly not an addiction therapist. Mostly the broken home, broken marriage kinds. 
If I'm being honest, I think he's gay. I think he hopes I am too. I think he hopes sobriety will shine a radiant light on my Latin longing to caress a cock and that the lucky cock that catches my eye will be hit. <laughs> I'm not, by the way. Not what? An alcoholic? I don't know. You were pretty sure three months ago. Erin is back, still a weight person. She carries a tray that contains a bottle of Smirnoff, a bottle of tonic water, an empty glass, ice, and the wine cut in half. Something for you, sir? No thanks. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I wasn't sure of anything three months ago, or maybe that's just what I told you to keep you from proselytizing. Tanner, you almost died. Or maybe it was just, maybe I haven't hit bottom yet. <laughs> and you're the one who hates cliches. You know what happened. I know I went through hell when she left me. I know if I hadn't had vodka, I might not be here today. God, I love the first time. Like the world starting up all over again. A new body, a new kiss, and you. That look like you'd been lost for so long and you were suddenly, finally found. I watched it happen. It was just social drinking before that. And then you started spiking your orange juice at breakfast. Red Bull cocktails in the middle of the afternoon. In the middle of a photo shoot, for Christ's sake. Because you figured the caffeine would counter the effects of your old friend. Vodka. Who it so happens fucking kept me alive, Robert. After a year of her coming back, then leaving me again, and coming back, and making me think it was all my doing, all the crazy shit in my life. Aaron transfers the ice cubes into a glass loudly. I, uh, I have these dreams. Vodka dreams. Sarah replaces Aaron at the podium. She pours an inch of vodka into the glass and reaches for the tonic water. Dreams? Like after you've had too much vodka? No. Dreams since I quit. He stops her from pouring the tonic water, picks up the vodka bottle, and pours more of it into the glass. Dreams of just drinking vodka randomly. Like I'm out somewhere. At a reception, or a party, or a bar, or with you. And I just have one or several, and I wake up cursing because I blew all those weeks of sobriety and then I realize it was a dream. I'm still okay. You are okay. You'd be okay if you had a nice big sip of that vodka tonic. What do we do in the dreams? Mostly this, flirt, foreplay. But it's clear, you don't hate me and you want me again. I'm in the dreams too. No, you're not. Are all men liars? You know I am. You don't know anything. They are my dreams. In the worst ones, you're driving a car, blitzed on Smirnoff. You're banging into parked cars and mailboxes and you know the cops are gonna find you again. Even though they've already stopped you twice and let you go, you know the next time they're not gonna be so forgiving. Even though I'm white. Excuse me? The cops are black. Of course. You're driving way <laughs> too fast. It's a residential neighborhood. Yes, there's a house. I'm driving right toward a house, and you're in the house. And something's happening in that house, and I've got to stop it. Tanner, it's your turn. It's a house. I don't know. A, a house I've been wanting to get into all of my life. So it's my house. No. Tanner, it's your turn. It's Everyone is waiting. her mother's house. Oh, then it's not my house. And just as I ram the car up the driveway, right up the front door, you come running out. Running from escaping from whatever was happening in there and right into my fucking Tanner, car. Tanner, it's your turn. Tell them who you are. Tell them your name. No, I don't want to. My name is Sarah, and I broke his heart. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> my name is Robert, and I'm the reason he's sober. Hi, Hi Robert. Robert. Hi, Robert. My name is Aaron, and I'm his daughter. Oh my Holy gosh. shit. Relax. <laughs> Biological and no, he wasn't a donor. It wasn't like that. Erin pulls out her cell phone and begins a text. Hello. You don't know me, but I think you knew my mother. Her name is Serenity. <laughs> but that probably wasn't her name then. But anyway, I think you got her pregnant. What? And I think she had the baby, even though she never told you about it, because I think I was the baby. Yeah, right. She told me she had a sperm donor, mm. and there was this whole confidentiality thing, so I was never allowed to contact. So why are but that you... was a fucking lie, oh. because I found a picture in a drawer in the attic. Mm. Why don't you answer my texts? I know you're reading them. 
you are at this thing together in Northern California, some kind of nature retreat. She's a photographer, like you. You were supposed to be taking pictures of birds and nature and shit, but I think you decided to end up taking pictures of each other instead. Like, in her tent, or yours, like, naked. Oh. The picture I found was of the two of you. No. The world's first selfie. No. Since it looks like you're never gonna say anything about this. Cut this shit out. Finally. I took a picture of the picture with my phone. Oh, no, and no. And here it is. The stage is suddenly dominated by the image of a creased photograph showing a starkly lit young tanner and a woman naked and tangled in sleeping bags. You had a nice body back then. Tanner moves to the podium with the drinks. He pours more vodka into the glass and then the tiniest splash of tonic, then squeezes the half lime over the ice. He rushes the rim of the glass to his lips. Wait! You're not gonna drink that. Are you? You might as well. Are you? Are you? Are you? Blackout. Scene two, come ready and see me. In the darkness, we hear undefined chaos and Tanner's voice cutting through it with alarmed, frightened sounds, the sounds of waking up from a nightmare. Stark lights up on Tanner and Sarah in bed. He is sitting up, batting at invisible things. She is waking. <sighs> no, I, I didn't stop. Oh, what the hell? God, what the hell's going on, Tanner? Tanner! Oh, Tanner. It's you. It's I didn't, me. I didn't. Are you all right? Did, did what? What, were you dreaming? What's the matter? Why am I here? What, why was I dreaming? What, it's, I was dreaming. It's Sarah. You were dreaming. Yes, okay, I was, yes, I was, I was talking, people explaining. In the dream? Was it a dream? It didn't feel like a dream. It, you were there. Weren't you there? I was here beside you. You're in my bed. We fell asleep. Oh, yeah, it, it was a dream, it was a dream. Yeah, you told me about your dreams. I had no idea. Why am I here? We came here after, don't you remember? We met at the restaurant and we talked and you followed me home. You asked me to, you asked me to. Yes, you didn't stop me. <laughs> we came here after we met at the restaurant I fell asleep. Well, we... You fell asleep after we... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I invited you in for a drink. Yes, yeah, a vodka tonic, only we... No, never... we never got around to the drink. We... Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that wasn't a dream. No. It was nice. I didn't... The dream was something else. There was a restaurant, but there was, I don't know. It was like a TED Talk or something. Or maybe it was a meeting. You were there, and um, and you were there. And you were there, and, and oh, Andy, so was my I daughter. To oh. Did I help? Did I tell you I have a daughter? Yes. Yes, I didn't dream that either. Well, you didn't say much about her, only that she existed and she came to see you. Yeah, a, a few years back, not long after you and I. And you were drunk when she arrived. I told you that. Wow, I really opened up. <laughs> yes. But mostly we talked about. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. That wasn't why I called you. No. No, I, I didn't call you because I wanted to get you in bed. Okay, you wanted to tell me you were a father. No, no, I wanted to tell you what happened. I almost died a few months ago. Did I tell you that? Not in those terms. You had a medical issue, you said. I vomited blood all over my kitchen. I was just sitting there having a uh, breakfast, some eggs and toast and some orange juice mm -hmm. and vodka in the orange mm -hmm. juice. Okay. And suddenly I felt nauseous and uh, I stood up and there was this flood, red pouring out of me and it wouldn't stop. It went on like 
until, oh, I couldn't imagine I had that much stuff in me to vomit. You did tell me this, just not in quite so much detail. Well, then, don't leave. <laughs> Please, stay here a little. No. It's only like two, you have something in the morning. No, I'm just, I'm still just trying to get my bearings, all right? These dreams. You have them every night? Yes. This one was different. I was just telling my story, but I kept being interrupted by you or her or Your daughter. Them. Yes. You only saw her the one time, right? In real life? Right, but we text. She wants to come again this summer. I told her about the... Uh, I told her I'd been sober since this all happened. Why? If it's what you want to do now, not drink, I'm sure it's hard. That's nothing to be proud of. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure I want to. I'm not even sure if I'm, I don't seem like an alcoholic, do I? Not to me. Because? Because you're asking the question. You're in control. Alcoholics don't have control. That's why they need sponsors and meetings and all those steps. And they usually can't stop talking about it, in my experience. Alcoholics blame everything on alcohol. It's a dodge, really. Okay. That doesn't mean you should drink if you have medical issues, of course. What are your medical issues, anyway? Yeah, just normal stuff. Normal if you've been putting away a fifth of vodka a day for five years. I've got the organ donor box checked, but I pity the fool who ends up with my liver. Or my esophagus. There's like these varicose veins but on the inside of your body and I just had three of those just blow up all at the same time. That's what happened that morning. Yeah, when let's I... not revisit that, sorry, okay? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So no one told you to quit. They just told you to cut back, keep it under control. Right, well. Just promise me you won't be one of those people who keeps going on about codependency and making amends and how your parents never loved you enough when you were little. I fuck drunks. You're not a drunk. You overindulged. So what? Now you know to cut back. Well, I... You're not an alcoholic, Tanner. I'd know if you were. You're not. I forgot what a good listener you are. You were different in the dream. Oh, they say everyone in your dream is actually you, you know. Who says that? I don't know. Freud? Young? I've been in therapy. You have? Sure. Two or three times, who hasn't these days? Just me, I guess. Well, except for Robert. Who's Robert? He's a therapist, but he's not my therapist. He's my friend. Oh wait, he was your friend when we were together, wasn't he? Uh, the black guy. Yes, he is black and an alcoholic. Oh, well. He doesn't fit your stereotype though. Well, maybe in some ways, he helped me go to the AA the first few times. He's gay too, I think. Yeah, I remember him. He's gay? Huh. Makes sense. I don't think he liked me. Like me being with you, I mean. Sarah, it's after two. Why are you dressed again? Well, if we're not going to... I'm sorry I woke you up. I'm very sorry about the dream. Well, we were going to have a drink before. Before we got carried away. I shouldn't do that. I don't know why I even suggested that. You didn't. I did. Well then, I don't know why I came in. Really? Do you want me to leave? No. You liked taking my clothes off before. You can do it again if you want. I want. I should get dressed. He rises quickly, gathers some clothes, and looks for... Your bathroom? That way. He exits. After some thought, she exits. We hear cupboards opening and closing, glass clinking. She enters with a half full fifth of vodka, a bottle of tonic water, and two glasses with ice in them. She sets them on a table. Tanner enters. Okay, so I should go unless... Oh. In case you change your mind. I mean, that's why you came in, so I thought. I can take it away if you want. Tanner. I knew this would happen. What? This, all of it. 
from the moment I walked into the restaurant, saw you there. God, it was such a surprise to hear from you. The last time we talked, it was Do you like, remember the last time we talked? I remember it wasn't nice. Mm, Cause see, I don't. There was a lot of conversations over the phone before you changed your number. And I don't remember any of them specifically, only that I wanted to see you and you wouldn't let me. Wouldn't even tell me where you were. You were staying at Frank's, right? God, half-naked Frank, he was such an exhibitionist. That's where you stayed after you left, right? Listen, it's water over the bridge now. It was necessary. You weren't reasonable. You kept making all these ultimatums. Do you remember that? No, I remember you using that word a lot. Ultimatums. So much that I started to wonder if you even knew what that word meant. It just got to, I don't know, you wanted too much and you started getting so paranoid. Every time I was late getting home, you thought I was cheating on you. You were cheating on me. You came to bed and you smelled of other men. Are you honestly claiming now that that was paranoia? I needed space. You were talking about buying a house together, a house. We weren't married, there was no contract. You gave me a fucking venereal disease. That's when you changed your number after I left that message telling you I had chlamydia. My, this conversation has taken a turn. Jesus, Sarah. We don't know who gave it to who. We don't. You could have had it without symptoms before we ever even... No, no, I couldn't. I was using condoms oh. since the 80s with everyone oh, until... Every single time. You expect me to believe that. Every no, single Sarah, time. Sarah, Sarah, stop. This is not why I wanted to see you tonight. Oh, sure seems like maybe you did. She starts to make herself a drink. The... Chlamydia is not the thing. It's not important. I got treated. I assume you did too? I forgot the freaking line. What? Of course I did. Of course I fucking got tested and treated. I didn't have any symptoms though. I wouldn't have even known if you hadn't told me. You changed your number. I was pissed. I didn't want to deal with you anymore. I forgot the stupid lime. You always had to have half a lime squeezed into every vodka tonic, You're remember? not making that for me. God, why'd we stop using condoms anyway? That was your idea. I don't even know if I have a lime. Oh, I, I think I do. She starts to move past him, but he intercepts her. Okay. We stopped using condoms because I didn't like it. The way the sex was no, with you us didn't then. like it. Okay, let me finish. The way it was with us, so intense, especially at that moment on the edge of that. I didn't want anything between us. I hated the condoms. I wanted to feel us together, nothing between, because it was so, because with you, for the first time in my life, it was the first time I'd ever had that, that feeling like being. What? No, no. Nothing between us, that's what we had. What I had, what I thought we had, and then you're gone. Tanner, you remember how it was. Practically the whole last winter we lived together, you stopped trusting me completely. You were out every night. Your boss was such a tyrant, you said, but that was Frank, right? No, Frank wasn't my boss. Whoever your boss insisted you stay late because... It was the campaign season. We were heading into the midterms. Wait, okay. So who was half-naked Frank? I thought he was your boss. No, Russ was my boss. Frank was the headhunter who tried to get me to move into the private sector. We met at his place a lot because we didn't want to be seen downtown together at lunchtime. How many guys were you fucking while you were living with me? Oh! No, I need a line. You know what? No. We lived together, okay? We did not have a contract or even an understanding. I didn't require you to be monogamous. We stopped using condoms! So? So? You looked me in the eyes night after night and said you'd never felt this way with anyone, ever. I can't control what you think you heard me and say. And I felt exactly the same way. Never, never in my life my life changed when I met you, and it changed again when I had sex with you, and it just got better and better, and every time we would come to the edge, and I would look into your eyes, and there was nothing, nothing between us. I was, I mattered. I belonged. Like, never in my life I belonged anywhere. You remember what you want to remember. 
Just like you dream what you need to dream to get through. You're saying I made the whole thing up in my head. You were just saying words like the words you say to every guy you have sex with, right? Oh my God, that's not what I said. You make it sound like I was fucking half the city behind your back. Well, weren't you? No, I was not. I had relationships. Yes, I had sex with other people. While we were together. Yes, I had to. You were so smothering. Oh, stop it. Don't lie. You told me I was the only person you'd ever... I told you what you wanted to hear, but what you needed to hear. God, you were so... Tanner, you were so, so needy. Maybe it's what I do. I've been through three therapists now, and we always land in the same place. So, I give people what they need. I make them feel, like you said, known. How many guys have you done this with? Just how tiny of a grain of sand am I in this vast desert of your therapeutic landscape? What, you want me to quantify? Yes. How many? <sighs> I need the perspective. How many guys? Or is it girls too? Have you been down that road? Yes. Something wrong with that? No. Good. Twice. It was interesting. Did you break their hearts too? I'd rather think I mended them a little. Tanner looks for his shoes. He sits, puts them on, ties the laces. I think I understand what role you want me to play now. I'm responsible for every bad thing that's ever happened to you, yes? That's what this whole pretense of getting together was all about? So do you have any limes? Yes. Should I for you? No. What else you got? Um, scotch. A little Magellan in the freezer. Ugh. Olives. I hate gin. How about wine? Yeah, in the fridge. You want? Sure. Is it red? It's in the refrigerator. No. Pinot Grigio, I think. A good one, but I opened it yesterday. I was hoping it was red and cold. Ugh, with an ice cube in it, I suppose. Why not? <laughs> I have a nice cab. I'll open it for you. If Are you, you serious? You know I'm sober. You know it matters. Are you seriously offering you me a drink? You asked. This was a mistake. Why? Because it's not as easy as you thought it would be to blame me for everything, for making you an alcoholic. You didn't make me an alcoholic, but you were a trigger. What a selfish thing to say. A, a trigger? Like on a gun? You gave me something? and then you yanked it away. Oh, tell it to Freud or Robert. His take on this is obviously more accurate than mine. I mean, after all, I was just there for the whole thing while he sits pining away for Who's you. Who's shifting the blame now? The blame? Oh my God, it's so obvious. How can you not see it? We had something, you and I, between us, something extraordinary and beautiful. We made something together during sex, but not just during sex. Before and after, too. It's lovely and extraordinary and ephemeral. Why can't you just accept that? It was real. It wasn't forever. God, we lived together for almost two years, for God's sake. I didn't think that was possible before you. It obviously wasn't. It wasn't then. But it was from then on. You're living with someone now? Maybe. He's been away for a couple weeks. <laughs> of course. What? Uh, there's guy stuff in the bathroom. Yes. What? Most of it's not his. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sarah. Oh, Tanner, don't hate me. I don't. <laughs> don't love me either. No, I take that back. I love that you love me. When you called and when I heard your message, I leaped a little inside and thought of you in a while. And when I heard your voice, all the good things came back. Martini? Vodka? You're kidding. Still, it's been four hours. Get the wine. Seriously? Yeah. Get it. The white or... Either. It doesn't matter. No ice cubes if it's red, though. Okay. You're sure? I'm not going to drink it. 
I'm going to watch you drink it like a perv, like a sick peeping Tom. Peeping Tanner. Oh, that gave me a shiver. Can I bring two glasses? More if you want, in case anyone else comes round to pick up their toiletries or whatever. <laughs> Shush, that would be sick. But it won't happen. She exits. Tanner sits for a moment, listens to the sound of wine glasses clinking. He stands, looks at the bottle of vodka on the table. He puts on his coat and exits. Sarah enters with a half full bottle of white wine and two wine glasses. She sees that Tanner is not there, perhaps checks to see if he's in the bathroom. She returns, sets out the glasses, uncorks the bottle, and pours an inch of wine into each glass. She picks up one and toasts the other. She sips, it satisfies her deeply. Lights fade. Scene three, a few hours later, an office with a desk, a chair, and a more comfortable chair. Tanner sits in the more comfortable chair, very still. Robert enters, dressed as this, he was dressed in scene one, in casual golf attire. He sits down behind the desk and prepares himself for what might be a difficult task. Sheila told you I was in here. Jesus right? Christ! <laughs> Sorry? Sheila, your receptionist told you I was in here, right? No! Uh, she said she would. I didn't want to scare you. What the fuck are you doing here? You, you shouldn't be in here. Sheila let me in. Why? I don't understand why she didn't tell you. I, I didn't come in the front, I came in from the back. I don't have hours today, but even if I did, she should know better than to let you in my office when I'm not she even- She knows me. She knows I'm your friend. Oh, that doesn't matter. She, she likes me? She could get fired for this. You wouldn't do that. I should. That would be your responsibility. Can I help it? People can't say no to me? Why are you dressed like that? Were you golfing? She must have buzzed you in. She did. She likes me. Yes, Tanner. Everyone loves you. Do you need something or because there's a mother of an impossible 15 year old who's threatening to report me to the state board. If I don't attend to her, post haste. Post haste? I'm reading Austin, Northanger Abbey. Good. Have you ever read Austin? No. Good. Why are you here? You didn't say anything about golfing today. Why is this woman going to report you to the state? She's not. She never will. I'm her daughter's sixth therapist in three years. Her last one claimed mom was Munchausen's. <laughs> That's Mighty Python, right? No. It's a very rare, theoretical, quite possibly non-existing diagnosis for parents who literally make their children sick. Munchausen by proxy, to be exact. So go ahead, make your call. You want me to wait out front with Sheila? You can wait. What's the matter? I slept with Sarah. Jesus Christ! Did you drink? No. Wanted to. For... 30 seconds. Why is that the first thing you ask? Tanner, for an intelligent man, you're incredibly dim sometimes. I told you I was going to call her. I called her. We had dinner. When I woke up in her bed, I thought it was a dream. <laughs> there she was, beside me, just like. Finish the sentence. You can imagine. I'd rather not. What happened? Such a child. Ah, uh, yes, which is why you're the perfect therapist for me. I'm not your goddamn therapist. Only because I don't pay you. Maybe if I paid you, you what? would... What? Maybe you'd finish the sentence for me. I never take you on as a patient or a client. We call them clients here. Why? Something about greater sense of agency. No, I mean, why wouldn't you take me? Well, for one thing, you're... But even if you weren't, I, I wouldn't. The games I have to play with these kids to get their hapless parents to engage is difficult Even enough. Even if I were what? Fill in the blank. An alcoholic? Everything's about that with you, isn't it? 
since the big event, whatever I was to you before that, when you watched me in the emergency room that day, retching in that wretched little green bag, from then on I was a drunk. A whole drunk, nothing but a drunk. I knew you were an alcoholic way before that. Knew? No, but you were in that frame. Frame? How long? When did the framing begin? When did Sarah shut you up? October 17th, 2013. I'm kidding. Um, I don't remember the exact date. I moved out that fall. We've been planning to get a new place, one that was neither hers nor mine. Ours. I always figured that was the trigger. Trigger? It went south two months after you met her. I don't have to tell you this. You said it yourself at the time, even before you moved into her place, which, as you may recall, I said was the stupidest thing you had ever yes, done. Yes, yes, these are true things. That's why you're so important to me. You see all the things I want to forget. Oh, don't make this about and me. That, that thing, you keep me so real. I'm not just a client to you, not just a patient to you. Stop it. But you care, and that matters. Am I not supposed to be God damn it, stop deflecting! Tell me about the 30 seconds. Oh, Jesus. Tell me. It was quick. Yes, was it? No, it was sharp. Uh-huh. It was long. It was deep. Really, it was just 30 seconds. <laughs> In that time, I felt it all the way to the bottom. Oh, I wanted it. The sweet relief, sweet oblivion. It, your friend. Yes, my old friend Vodka, ushering me to that clean, well-lighted place. Hemingway? Nada is my nada, our nada as it is in nada. Do you want to drink right now? Yes, please, with three ice cubes and the juice of half a lime. How did you know? Because I want one too. I want one every day. Yeah, that's not what you said three months ago. You said it gets easier. You wake up thankful, and you don't even think about it some days. That's true, I don't. But I do. It's always there, just like they say in the meetings. The folks who've been sober 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that. I can't even imagine being alive in 20 years. So the 30 seconds are up. You don't want to drink anymore. What do you want? I love watching you work. What did oh, you... you're so you. What did you want? How the hell do I know? Take a guess. I wanted to sleep. I was tired. It was three when I left her place. So you went home, you went to bed. No, I walked first. Walked. Till the sun came up, then life sprang anew. Are we going to take all day with this? You came here. I don't know why you thought you could find me here on my day off. You didn't answer your cell. I turned it off. When you're golfing? Yes. You picked up from Mrs. Munchausen. She's a patient, a client, mother of a client. But how did you even know I The service be... knows how to reach me if there's an emergency. They thought this might be emergency, but what I asked is how'd you know I I'd be here? I talked to Sheila. Sheila loves me. She told me you were coming in, and speaking of that, what if it is an emergency? Why are you wasting your time talking to me when your patient or her munchausen mama She's not in trouble? She's not an emergency, are you? Do I look like a fucking emergency? Did you think about killing yourself after you left Sarah? Of course I didn't. I'd have a drink before I'd do that. I'm not that stupid. I'm not an emergency. I didn't ask if you tried to kill yourself. I asked if you thought about it. Come on, Walking Robert. around until the sun came up. Come on, Robert. Just say it. Just say you thought about it. Just say, yes, Robert, I thought about killing myself. Yes, Robert, I thought about it. So what? Thank you. Now what? Now you, I can call the angry mother of my clients, and you can find a meeting. I don't want to go to a fucking meeting. Go anywhere. Why? This is not about drinking. It's about a stupid mistake I made, and now I feel shitty about it, and I want to hang out with you. And forget about how shitty it makes me feel. It's not why I'm here, and I have other things to do. Go to a meeting. I'm an adult. I don't have to. I don't want to go to some rundown church basement and drink stale coffee and listen to people talk about God, for God's sake. Well, what do you want, Tanner? Will you tell me that? What the hell do you want? I don't know. You do. Tell me. I do not know what you want. I only know you thought you got it from Sarah once, and when Sarah left, you got it from your... Good friend in a clear plastic bottle with a red Russian label manufactured in New Jersey. And then your body said, no, no, no more of that, or I'm going to fuck up your esophagus. Then you come to me or to Sheila at the front desk who loves you, Tanner, loves you, even though she doesn't have a clue who you are and frankly doesn't care. She just knows that you're cute and you're funny and that you're Robert's friend. And that won't cut it. The hole you're trying to fill, wherever it came from, 
It's still gonna be there until you do the fucking work of figuring out a different way to fill it. It's very nice. Very neat and such a fucking cliche. Oh, I go to the fucking meetings, I hear the narrative. I never know what I'm doing there. I try to think of things to say, but it never comes out right. They all just stare at me like I'm four years old or something. And I, whatever I say is gonna be wrong. It's not gonna be what the big book says. And I'll feel worse than I did when I came in. That's what you want me to do? Thank you, no. Get out of my office. What? God, I felt good. Excuse me? Get out of my office. You know how many times a day I wanna say that to these parents who have no fucking clue what that word parent means? These kids who never want for anything, who always get everything they ask for. Kids who expect a goddamn trophy for participation. Like fragile little snowflakes kept aloft by Mumsy and Dadsy's gentle, tender, never-ending love and Snowflake. validation. Snowflake, is that a racial dig against the privileged white, white people? No, but yes, probably. <laughs> but it's not important because that's not your story at all. Oh, I'm pretty white, pretty privileged. Yes, you are. Pretty fucking vulnerable right now, my friend. <laughs> fragile, little snowflake. Undefended. Beneath all the armor, I mean. Armor? All the play acting. Pretending you're in charge because everybody loves you. Now, I think that's why you never let me go to a meeting. You don't want me to see what you look like without all your charisma. Right, it's all about you. Do you make people laugh in the meetings? Sure, of course. Do you? I tried. Till they called me on it. <laughs> they, she. Actually, crusty old lesbian nailed my ass to the wall, said, hey, Biff, this ain't a comedy club. Nobody here gives a shit about how cute your dimples are. Seriously, she called me Biff. <laughs> Biff! What'd you do with that? I wanted to punch her in the face. I didn't ask what you wanted to do. I asked what Shut you up. I, I shut up. I stood up to leave. And this old guy next to me puts his hand on my arm and stopped me. And I stood there, and he didn't say anything, and neither did I. And then I sat down again. And then the next person started talking like, like nothing happened. Because nothing had. When you asked me to be your sponsor, and I said no, you were hurt, but you never asked me why. Didn't want to. I know. If you wanted to come to the meetings with me, I couldn't figure out why you didn't want to. Same reason you couldn't be my therapist, right? Kind of, not exactly. Why then? I didn't want to know too much. <laughs> Fuck that, you're a natural born busybody. You want to know everything. No, I don't. No, I don't, didn't. Ask me something. Ask me anything. Let's not play games. I'm not, let's just get, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. What are you so afraid to know about me that you think I would share with total strangers in a 90 minute meeting where everything that's said there stays there? God, I hate that. It's so hypocritical. What is? The whole anonymous thing, it makes no sense. If there's nothing to be ashamed of, why the secrecy? If you want to end the stigma around alcoholism, why the hell would you insist on keeping it in a closet? I don't get that. Because... Tell me. Because it's not about you. That's why you hate it, I think. I mean, anonymous doesn't mean hiding under a bushel or in a closet. It means being humble to the tradition of service, of support. It's about being quiet, not prideful, not arrogant. Bullshit! If you fucking beat alcohol and you want it as bad as I want it, you should be shouting it from the rooftops. You should have your name on a billboard. His name is Robert and he is an alcoholic! Hi, Robert! How was it? 
with her. What? You said to ask you anything, so I'm asking. How was it to be with Sarah again after all this time? Amazing. Scary amazing. I felt it all. Again. All? The being there, nothing between us, perfect belonging. Amazing. No. I thought, oh, I don't know what I thought, but I thought it would be easy somehow. Easy to just do it and be done with it. Pleasure, but not being that. there, nothing between. Yes. Have you ever had that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I have, maybe, once. First time? Yes. Only time? I beg your pardon? Sorry, it's just we never talk about it. I have sex, Tanner. I mean, maybe not as regularly as you do, but I'm not a friggin'. No, sorry, I didn't mean that to imply that. The first time, everything until then has just been theoretical. And I'm not talking about the orgasm, the touch. The first time in my life I felt another... Man? Yes, Jesus. You knew, right? I mean, it wasn't a big secret. Well, I figured, yes. You never talk about women, and when I talk about women, you never have right. nothing. So I just, I never knew. Right, but I figured I, I didn't nope. want to nope. assume. No, nope. right. Nope. I'm gonna just. Sure. <sighs> For what it's worth, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, please, what you're about to say, please don't say you don't think of me as gay. <laughs> no, no, that's not. That's no different from saying you don't think of me as black. I never said that. I would never say that. What? Do you think I would? White? Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that I respect you. And if, I mean, if one of those reasons you never felt you could tell me was, I mean, no. If the whole problem was maybe you were afraid it would put our friendship at risk, if I knew that you, that you... That I what? Oh, if you, oh, Christ, you're gonna make me say it. If I did what? Say, say what? That you were attracted to me, that you wanted me and were jealous of, I mean, <laughs> when I told you about Sarah, that you were, I mean, that you were jealous, in a way, of her. What? Or... That I was jealous of Sarah? Well, I... Oh, don't tell me you're telling me this. Don't tell me you just said that. Robert, I'm just saying... If... <laughs> if you had feelings for me, I'm okay with that. It's not a problem with me. Oh, no? Well, what a glorious fucking relief that is. <laughs> What a fine and generous friend you're turning out to be. What a sacrifice, all by your own little dimpled, woke self, bearing the straight white man's burden. And all this time, I thought you liked me as a friend, a person, your old friend Robert, who, wait, make that straight white, normal drinking man's burden. Yeah, until you barfed out half your insides one day. And who'd you come to scrape you off of the floor and get you to the hospital so they could save your fucking life? That friend, Roberts, who spent the next day scrubbing the blood off every surface in your kitchen, and the next week holding your hand in the hospital and taking your calls and making sure your clients knew what had happened so they wouldn't freak out that they had hired a drunk. And the next three months coddling your stupid ass through your first taste of sobriety, every other day convincing about how fucking boring it was, or whining about the big, bad, terrible dreams you had, or lying to yourself about what had happened, what it meant, which you damn well should have known without me having to tell you. Sorry? No problem. I'm a shit, okay? I get that. I know that. I'm a shitty friend. And I don't deserve you or all the things you've done for me. Robert, I, I'm sorry, please. It's just... I know. Shut up! Yeah. You don't know. Just be quiet for another minute, all right? All right. It's just that... 
Hey, why do you think I'm your friend? Why do you think I put up with you? Because I want your body? Because I want to suck your dick? And you think I whack myself off to you every night thinking about you? I don't. <laughs> Vin Diesel? Yes. Chris Evans? Yes. Chris Hemsworth? Yes. I mean, all the Chris's. <laughs> yes, yes. You, brother? Not so much. Because, I don't know. It's just not what we are to each other. Maybe I'm not even at the point where I can even imagine loving a guy for real. I mean, the completely, the lose yourself, completely way that you talk about. But I knew that first time, that's where I belonged, in another man's arms. My skin against another man's skin. Skin, armor. I want with a man what you had with Sarah, but it's not your skin. You're not that man. I'm sorry. Quit saying that. No, but, I mean, I guess it was the only way I could make sense of why you did what you did. Why you've tried so hard to help me. Tanner, it's not that complicated, okay? I love you. No, that's too confusing. I care about you. You, for no goddamn reason in the world, I just care about you. Get that? Tanner looks at him. It feels like they should hug, but they don't. Tanner nods. Lights fade. <laughs> Scene four. Genes and genres. Two months later, the back deck of a modest home in the country. There is a swing on one end of the porch and a chair on the other. There are steps down to a weedy yard. Aaron is on the swing with a mostly eaten popsicle. After a bit, Tanner emerges and with a messy clipboard. The light blinds him at first, but he sees Aaron. I can move. No, you're good. I just didn't see you. I was in the dark room. I know. All morning. You can borrow the car if you want to go into town. I told you that, didn't I? Yeah. You told me. You didn't say why on earth I would ever want to do that, but you did say that I could. Do you have any more of these? No. Hey, a reason to go into town. He sits on the steps leading down from the porch. What are we having for dinner tonight? Um, I don't know. What's the matter? Nothing, just... That just sounded weird, didn't it? You asking that question? We gotta eat, or are you taking me to another restaurant? I don't know. Uh, this is your third night here? The way you asked, it just it sounded like, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to eat, we'll have. As long as it isn't more popsicles. They're fruit juice. No high fructose corn syrup, all natural. Okay. My mom is the same way. Always asks me what I want for dinner. Like, she can't just decide on something and then we make it and then we eat I it. I thought you weren't living with her anymore. I mean, when I was a kid, it was always up to me to decide what we'd have for dinner. I got so pissed at her sometimes. Like, why do I have to decide everything? Tanner is distracted by something on his clipboard. Do you think you would have been a good father? No answer. After a moment, she rises, moves past him down the steps into the yard. Can I just drop this stick anywhere? I mean, it's biodegradable, right? What? No, just... You have too many dandelions. By whose account? They're everywhere. And most of your neighbors don't have any. I mean, there must be an easy way to just... What harm do they do? They're bright. They're abundant. They don't hurt anybody. They're nasty on bare feet. And you have such nice soft grass here. I mean, the green is so different from California. And they propagate in such a delightful way in a collaboration with a breeze. Oh, good one. I was thinking you would have been hippie dad, but now I think maybe it's smooth dad. You have dad genres? 
I do. Thanks to my mom. Her life was like a box of candy. You know, the Forrest Gump thing. Yeah, sure. You never know what you're gonna get. It never made any sense. A new guy would show up and I'd meet him and I'd think, really? This? That was before I figured out that the common denominator was that my mother had a really soft place in her heart for assholes. I made coffee. You want some? If you've got creamer. Milk. Almond? No. Cow. No hazelnut stuff? Creamer? No. Just milk. From a cow. Okay. He exits into the house. Aaron looks at the clipboard and gradually gets interested in it. Tanner appears at the door with two cups. He stops to watch Aaron study the clipboard, then enters. Here you go. Milk. No nuts. Is this a wedding? Yes. Pays the rent. They pay you a lot? These people did. Trash tycoons. All the little green dumpsters you saw on the street yesterday? This family owns that company. A dumpster dynasty. Very religious. Bible verses on every bin. A legacy of litter. And lemon rinds. The Lord's languishing leftovers. <laughs> you like alliteration. You use it in every post. I do. Every. <laughs> Maybe you would have been poetic dad. Yeah, about that. <clears throat> These dads, I mean, assholes. There's not much to tell. I mean, my mom's not stupid. After a week or a month or a year, she usually sees who they really are. There have been hundreds. Surely not. Okay, dozens. A dozen, maybe. And now you're being prick dad. Ouch! <laughs> tell me about hippie dad. I think I would have liked him. <laughs> Doubt it. But he would have had almond milk or soy. Or no coffee at all in case it was exploiting some coffee farmer somewhere. <laughs> He'd have been with you a hundred on those dandelions, though. He liked anything that was bright and sunny and persecuted. He was cute. Closer to my age than my mom's. What they call the lost child in those dysfunctional family soch books. Thank you. I feel like I've known him all my life. He lasted almost a year. I was a sophomore in high school, never officially moved in, but you know, he was around a lot. He had trouble keeping a job or an apartment. Poor Phil. Phil. I used to call him Nick by mistake because Nick was the one right before him who did move in. That was smooth dad, funny, sold insurance. Well, he ran an insurance company with a partner. I mean, like he ran it into the ground. <laughs> He's in prison now. He gets out in a few months. Smooth. To get their names straight after Phil came into the picture, I'd pretend they both worked in a civic orchestra. The Petaluma Philharmonic. Get it? Like, not Nick, but Phil. Philharmonic. What? So, a criminal insurance guy and a lost child dandelion hugger. That's two. Why are you so curious Some about the dad thing? Some questions answer themselves. You know, the only really effective way to manage dandelions is with a weed killer that is banned in most states. It poisons them all the way down to the roots. You want me to do that just so I have some soft grass my You're neighbors not have? stupid. You know there's other ways of controlling dandelions. It's the most efficient way. Maybe I would have been efficient dad. She picks up the clipboard and holds it out to him. What? Don't you have to get back to work? No. I worked all morning. I'll make my deadline. So are you in therapy for your drinking problem? Mm, no. Because you haven't talked about it, and you mention it in your texts a lot. Well, it was a big deal five months ago. When? When you puked up all the blood. Yes. And that was because you drank. 
So, you want to uh, cross-examine alcoholic dad next? Is that it? Quit it with all the dad shit. I mean, this dad, that dad, you're not my dad. Yeah, I know, but you did start it. Yeah, and now I regret that I did, so let's Cool. Just... Fine. Puking up the blood. That was because you drank. Very likely, yes. <laughs> Very likely, yes? How about absolutely yes? <laughs> absolutely. Good one. Absolute. Vodka. <laughs> oh, uh, that wasn't on purpose. I'm more of a Smirnoff guy myself. Stoli on special occasions. Stoli? Stolichnaya. I don't know, booze. I hate the taste of alcohol. So did I when I was your age. I didn't start till I was in my 30s. They say it's genetic, but I can't imagine it. I do weed sometimes. My therapist said it was okay so long as, you know, I don't get dependent or anything. Yeah, that's when the problems usually start. Aaron picks up the clipboard, riffles through it, and stops on one page in particular. These pictures are so tiny. You can't even tell what's going on in them. That's called a contact sheet. Why? Like, these are people you have to contact, like, for permission or something? No. It's how it's made. The negatives are laid directly onto photographic paper and covered with a piece of glass to hold them flat in direct contact with the paper. Oh, sure, yeah. I should have known that. <laughs> My mom does the same thing, probably. Except she's mostly digital now. She wouldn't have contact sheets then. Well, she might have a printout of thumbnail shots, but she probably wouldn't call So are call you a good photographer? Because, like, you're a purist or something? I'm okay. I have a reputation. These people look really rich and boring. Yep. Isn't it your job to make them look less boring? It's a wedding, not a lot of room for creativity. Uh, I bet there is. I bet Andrew would find a way. He'd go nuts if he had to do shit like this, though. Andrew? Walter. He's been in National Geographic. He had a shot in the New York Times a few months ago, like these pretty, these pretty people hanging out under a waterfall in, I don't know, Brazil or someplace. He travels all over. I know who Andrew Welter is. Jesus, he's one of the greatest nature photographers alive today. My mom took a course with him. He was married and she became his mistress. Such a dumb word. I mean, a guy fools around and they call him a stud, but a woman, no, she's a mistress. Femme fatale. Wait, your mother had an affair with Andrew Welter. The Andrew Welter. A big shot photographer, yeah. I mean, she's still having it, although he's divorced now. She never told you? Erin, I haven't had a conversation with your mother since, uh, you... <laughs> Christ! I have a framed print of Welter somewhere in my attic. A flowering moss beneath a waterfall in Olympic Park. He still has a house in Tacoma. They split their time between there and Mom's place. He's a jerk. Do you think all famous people are jerks? Yeah, probably. He's why my mom went into therapy. At least that's what I think. Well, him and Nick and Bill, all of them, the dads. But your mom is still with him? Sort of. Walter? What? You want me to get you his autograph? <laughs> no, it's just, you're full of surprises. Oh, I get it. You're jealous, because she ended up with a better photographer than you. Jealous? <laughs> I barely remember who your mother was. I, nice. I'm sorry. That came out badly. Do you remember anything about it? The night that you two took pictures of each other, smoked weed, fucked? You want me to be honest, right? You don't even remember. Typical. No, I do. When I saw that picture you sent, well, I couldn't really refute that I'm now, I'm not talking I... about whether it happened. I'm talking about what it was like what you felt. Well, I'm sure it was great. Hot. I mean, two people, almost un anonymous, unencumbered. Unprotected. Hey, you don't know that. Oh, wait. I guess you do. Kinda. I exist, therefore I know. I was young then, and stupid. You were the age that I am now. No, but I was young, therefore stupid. <laughs> young and stupid, like me. You're not stupid. Don't make it look like I said that. I would never say that about you. Aaron, believe me. Men are stupid. Boys are stupider. Yes, they are. I mean, we are. 
I was a lesbian for a couple years in high school. Yeah? Neat. It was nice, but after a while I couldn't... There was something missing. Yes, I even think I know what it was. It's so unfair that guys have cocks. I mean, to just have it all hanging out there for the world to see and admire, whereas with women it's so internal, secret. The feminine mystique. It was a book by Betty Friedan from the 60s, I think. Yeah, I know that, but it was a weird reference. I mean, Friedan was dismantling Freud's idea that women could only find fulfillment in housework and child rearing, and I was talking right, about- Right, right, right. How do you know about that? I read. I'm in a wooden, women's studies group. Jesus, don't look so amazed that I know something. You know, you are a perfect example of the very thing that Betty Friedan was writing about. I mean, you assume, just because I'm a woman, that I don't know history or politics, and, and you assume that my mother is with the hot shit photographer just to ride okay. on his coattails, Whoa. or worse, to validate Whoa. your okay. own creative output Calm by associating down. with... You are just... Step away from the diatribe, Shulamith. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Good one. Step away from the diatribe, Shulamith. <laughs> Thank you. And I don't assume anything about your mother. Well, or you. Unconsciously, you do. Okay, maybe. Okay, I do. Of course I do. <clears throat> so, you were a lesbian for two years in high school. Like, what? You dabble? You live in a binary world. Like, everything is this or that. Yeah. Like, you are an alcoholic, or you're not an alcoholic. That seems to be really important to Based you. Based on what? Based on every text you sent since you blew up in your epiglottis or whatever. <laughs> Esophagus. But you said you were a lesbian, not bisexual. That seems a bit binary, too, if you don't mind my saying. If I was bisexual, I'd say I was bisexual. I was a lesbian. I was attracted to girls, and I was not attracted to boys. And now? I'm attracted to boys. Men. I'm not attracted to other women. Okay, but that doesn't... I'm sorry. This is not something I've thought much about until recently. My therapist is gay, and he... I thought you said you weren't in therapy. I'm not. My best friend is. A therapist, I mean. And gay. And he doesn't believe bisexuals exist. He thinks you're either straight or gay, and if you say you're bisexual, you're just on the way from one to the other. How nice for him. It'd be great to live in such an uncomplicated world, wouldn't it? But you totally aren't interested in women now. I never said that. Of course I'm interested, just not sexual. But you were in high school. Yes, exclusively. What does that mean, you shaking your head like that? I guess you're right. I guess I like things clear and stable, and when they aren't, that's when I... What? <clears throat> that's when you want a drink. A vodka tonic. Not a drink, a glass of vodka, actually, with just a pinch of tonic and half a lime squeezed in and three large ice cubes about this tall. Just one? One vodka tonic? Three. Maybe eight. You didn't even like the taste of it when you were my age. I didn't need it then. He hadn't showed up yet. We hadn't become friends yet. He? Vodka. Yes. Vodka is a guy. Don't ask me why. What was it like when you blew up and all that vomit? Did you think you were going to die? Mm, yes. Were you sad when you didn't? No. Well, maybe for a second. Why are you asking me all this? I have a right to know. I mean, you're responsible for me being alive and have a right to know who you are. Well, I'm not suicidal, and I'm not gay, if that's what you're thinking. I wasn't. Okay. When you jumped on the heat thing, I thought you were implying. No, I, I just thought it was weird to give a gender to a beverage. I suppose it is. I'm just trying to figure out what to expect. If alcohol's gonna be a thing for me, so I know what to do. 
if I ever catch it. It's not contagious. But it is genetic. So the conditions are there if I ever... Have your heart broken? What? I hope you're at least capable of having your heart broken. I'd have a hard time relating to you if you weren't. You became an alcoholic because somebody broke your heart. <sighs> that used to be the story before I blew up. Hell, it's a story I told a month ago, but lately it's been feeling kind of... What? Easy. Way too easy. Hey, this is the kind of stuff I'm supposed to talk about at meetings, not with my... I'm not your daughter. And you're not my dad. If I hadn't hunted you down, you'd never even know that I happened. That's true, but I... What? Are you having a stroke? No! <laughs> uh, I... I... I know what I want to say, I just don't know how to say it. Look, don't make it so heavy. Relax. Jump up and down. Stomp those friggin' dandelions. Stomp them to death. That's it. Angry dad. Ecstatic dad. Crazy dad. Killer dad. Weed killer dad. Uh, heavy dad. Airy dad. Fairy dad. No! Macho dad. Heartbroken dad. Uh, over it dad. Sober it dad. Stone cold sober it dad. Dumb drunk dad. I'm not your dad. I know that dad. Frenetic dad. Kinetic dad. Aesthetic dad. Synthetic dad. Athletic dad. Peripatetic dad. Uh, prophetic dad. Poetic dad. Uh, Cockatic dad. What? Diabetic dad. I am not. Uh, aesthetic dad. He falls to the lawn, ah. spraining his ankle. Pathetic dad. Pathetic dad. Cathartic dad. Raw chartic dad. Okay. Prosthetic dad. Oh, are you hurt? For real? No. Good. Uh, don't get up. Just. Just rest there. Okay, good idea. Resting, I mean, not the jumping. I got that from Phil. He did it with me once. I was so pissed off at my mom, I couldn't think straight. And he said, just jump. Don't think, just jump. Phil, the hippie dad. Yeah, when I was 15. He came on to me. That's really when the therapy started. <laughs> my mom almost killed him. I've never seen her like that. She kept throwing things at him and screaming, Get out! Get out! Did he... What? Force himself? No. Well, I mean, he didn't. Okay. Good. My mom, she wanted him arrested, but I made her let it go. My therapist helped me to do that, even though I think she wanted him in jail, too. You should see yourself. That is the most clueless face I have ever seen in my life. In my life. No, I was just, I'm just trying to take it. I'm sorry, I'm not more. You're fine. Um, I mean, are you fine? You just keep holding your ankle. No, I just fell on it wrong. I'll walk it off. He starts to walk it off. She sits watching him. Walk it off. Life's complicated. Yeah, it is that. Can you say it now? What you were going to say, but you didn't know how to say it, because that was the point of all the jumping. Oh, uh, was it? I'm not your dad, but, or, and I, um, I think you're lucky that I'm not, even though all the guys who were there instead of me were really shitty. I mean, how do we know I wouldn't have been even worse? I'm a weak man. I mean, even when you told me what you just told me, it felt like, of course, it, it felt like I was supposed to do something, say something, hold you? I don't know, I don't know. I, I wish, I wish I could have been as strong as you are, as smart as you are when I was your age. I mean, when I was your age then, when that creep, Nick? You see? No, Phil. Right, Phil Harmonic, it would be, it would work better if it was Nick Harmon Phil. Yeah, but that's not a word. When I was 15, I was into cars and sports and girls. Oh, of course, girls. If someone had done something like that to me or to someone I know, I think I would have run away screaming. 
or I would have clammed up, stuffed it down. I would have had no idea how to deal with it. And now, oh Christ, now I, I still don't fucking know. No matter how bad you think your mom handled it, I would have been way worse, way worse. What does that matter? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to say something. Right. About, I mean, something that will help explain something that's not a cliche or a dodge. My life's been a dodge. When I had my heart broken, I thought I had found the one true thing I wanted and needed to make my life worth living, but it wasn't. And I thought that was it. No more dodging. I was done. I wanted to be dead. And then a friend came along. And turns out, it was another dodge. Got me through five more years, but they were five years of faking it. Meeting clients and making art and shooting weddings and waking up every day half there. Dragging myself out of bed, dragging myself through the day, trying to keep busy and doing stuff. Some of it good stuff. <laughs> really, really good stuff. I mean, I'm no Andrew Welter, but I've done some damn good work and people are happy with it. And they always tell me how good I am and how thankful they are that I do what I do, only I'm never satisfied. The good feeling I ought to feel, I never feel it because I can't. I don't dare. It's that thing that I have to dodge, that thing that I know that if it hits me again, like it did that one time, it'll kill me. It'll obliviate, uh, obliterate me, obliviate. That's better, if it's a word. <laughs> Let's just say that it is. <laughs> what it gave me, what he gave me, my old friend Vodka, every night, the one more day I'd gotten through, that first cold taste that goes down warm and fills you and spreads and your mind begins to float just a little over the pain and the doubt and the terror and the very next taste is even better. It takes you further until you're in this place where anything can happen and nothing matters and these great thoughts come to you, these insights. And so when the glass is empty, you get another, and another, and another, till you sleep, and you wake again, and your head's stuffed, and you hollow at the same time, and you're half there again, half caring, half, um, oh, shit! I'm sure you're finding this helpful. I'm such a fucking narcissist. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> I'm talking about me. This, you just told me this awful thing, and all I'm doing is Being just- Being you. That's all right. It's kind of entertaining, if I'm being honest. You can't be something that you're not. I mean, you can try, but is that it? What you wanted to say? No, it's this. I am your father not your dad, your father. And as confusing as that is for both of us, I'm glad for it. I can't stop being your father, but even if I could, I wouldn't. You hear me? Sure. But. Of course. But. I don't know if I'm gonna be there for you. Right now, yes, I want to, and I want to promise it, but as I've said, I have this history and I dodge things and I don't know. I don't trust myself enough to say with any certainty that I won't dodge this. I see. I hope I won't. Well, I hope you won't too. I don't know what I'm made of. And I'm not going to pretend that I do. Sure. I don't know if I'm an alcoholic. I don't know if I'll drink again. I may never know. But I know I'm not half there anymore. I'm here right now with you on the deck of my house, staring at a miserable lawn full of squashed dandelions. <laughs> Don't worry about them. They'll be back. Yeah, they will. But you? But me? Who knows? Lights fade.
Scene five. A dream is a wish your heart makes. The stage is dark. During the following, the lights will slowly come up to reveal Tanner at the podium staring at the glass as he was at the end of scene one. This is not a stage. This is not a lecture. This is not a meeting. My name is Tanner. My name is Tanager. My name is Tangent. My name is Tangelo. Hi, Tangelo. Hi, Tanta Mount. Hi, Tanner Head. Yeah, hello and thank you. I'm anachronistic. I am atheistic. I am somewhat artistic. I can go ballistic. Meeting makers make it. Long as you forsake it. Buy it if you break it. God, you're so beautiful. Get out of the driver's seat. Let go and let God. When man listens, God speaks. When man obeys, God works. When your head begins to swell, your mind stops growing. Don't you think she's beautiful? It's not for me to say. Be part of the solution, not part of his problem. Aren't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? The elevator's broken. What? Maybe it's time to take the steps. <laughs> Oh, give me a break. <laughs> That's not funny. It's trite, like all of this. Life is a bad cliche, old chum. Life is a fucking circus. Alcoholic walks into a bar, says... Keep coming back. Minds are like parachutes. They don't work unless they're open. Not you, too. We're better than this. This is trite, smug. Cliches become cliches for a reason. Ever think of that? <laughs> She's smarter than you. You don't think I know that. Everybody's smarter than you. Come back to bed. Okay. That's where you're wrong. You try to control an addiction, that's when you lose control. He's smarter than you, too. Now you're just ganging up on me. Nothing so bad, you can't make it worse. She's not. What? Smarter than you. Oh. I really don't like her. <laughs> Keep coming back. But I need something. What? I need something. Sure. If you want a drink. That's our business. But if you want to quit. That's your business. Wait. Says who? Yeah. Who gave you the power to say what he should do? He asked. That's true. He's confused. He asked me to. Well, but for all the wrong reasons. Like? He wanted to get you in bed. And you wanted to get him in yours. That's neither here nor there. Neither up nor down. Neither true nor false. This is not a stage. This is not a play. Then what is it? This is vodka, not water playing the role of vodka. This is the real thing. Sarah, doubting this, takes the drink from his hand and samples it. She's impressed. Stoli. I know. I can smell it. Careful. What's the matter? It's the smell you remember most. The touch, yeah. My skin touching another man's skin for the very first time. But the smell too. That's exactly what it was like with her. Our bodies, electric, like touching something I'd never touched before. But it was a man. Suddenly everything fell into place. Like a waterfall, cold and hot and shocking all at once. I want that. It was beautiful. It always is. Suddenly, everything made sense. A woman, a guy, I don't care. I, I just want it. I felt obliterated. I felt known like I belong somewhere for the first time I want in my that. life. I want that. Because I knew it. Because I had it once. Oh, it's easy if you just stop trying so hard to find it. It's right there. Oh. Some questions answer themselves. Always right there and so... Easy. But that's why it's so hard. Stop! You're just confusing him. Everyone in a dream is really you. That's what my therapist said. This isn't a dream. You heard him say it. But wait. Yes, wait. It isn't a dream, and it isn't water pretending to be vodka. But wait, it is. Don't try to control what you can't control. I'm not. I'm having a dream. Another fucking vodka dream. Wasn't that obvious? No. no? Sorry. It's a dream, so it doesn't matter. Oh, wait, I get it. And if it's a dream, and if it doesn't matter, nothing matters.
He suddenly lifts the glass and drinks, nearly draining it. And it feels so damn good going down. You lose yourself. Nothing matters. Nothing matters? Try to keep up. Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing. Yeah, and it, it's really vodka, but it's a fucking dream. So, nothing matters. Or else everything does. Say more about that. When it's a dream, nothing matters. But when it's not, everything does. And who the hell can handle that? Not me. Not me. Not me. But I could. Maybe. What? You never know. That's the thing. You never know. I could be anything. Everything you were. Everything you weren't. You just don't know. Unless... Unless you don't want to. You terrify me. I know. <laughs> the look on your face. It's so worth it. Not every question answers itself. I'll try. Lights fade. End of flight. <laughs>